Hi YouTube, today I will show you my shortwave listening SWL SDR setup and attic DX antenna for SWL. That indeed is what you're looking at right now. There's a long wire strung in this attic. You can see the connection to the insulator down there that goes all the way down the length of the house, I think 70 something feet or so. And what's soldered here I'm touching is a line that continues down to the garage to a gator clip which I'll show later which would go on to the telescopic whip of a shortwave receiver. So there's a DX gator clip right down in the garage that I'll show you and improves reception. But that's not really what's important for the SDR. That I'll show you further down in the attic. Okay. So I'll continue down. I'm just going to follow the wire past the HVAC system in here. And then see how I have this hooked up to the SDR. Past the fin, okay. it's pretty pretty hot in here. It's obviously going to be hot in July in Ohio. Ow! Oops. And here we got to the important part. We're at the other end of the house and the other end of the long wire. You can see peaked back in there. Now the other insulator, other end of the wire. What do we have here? Well, there's another large gator clip, and then a wire down to a very important item. And what is that item? That is this new OAC Balin. This changes the impedance from 450 ohms to 50 ohms. It's a 9-1 balun, or I guess I'd say un-un because they're unbalanced loads. I have a little, I, I have no idea what you call that, a little tab connected at the input wire section, and then a counterpoise. Here, let's, let's get a little better view of that. And then a counterpoise connected to the ground. Okay, so let's follow the counterpoise. The counterpoise, I think, really improved reception, but it's not quite as long as it should be. It's this green, probably 20 gauge hookup wire. Uh, you can't see it there. Yeah, there we go. Now we can see it. Yeah, green hookup wire extended all the way to the end of the house and then along the posts up here and finally just wrapped around this this support for the end of it. Really if I wanted to have a good counterpoise I'd extend this all the way down the other side of the house. And now what I'll do is I'll show you the gator clip. I won't be testing that but you know just showing how, how you could use that with a pocket shortwave receiver and then we'll do some shortwave listening with my SDR. I just realized I forgot something so you'll notice that that Balin is not connected directly to the coax. There's a SMA coax adapter and then this white coax cable. We'll come back to that downstairs for SDR. But anyway that concludes the attic portion of the video and next we'll take a look at the DX gator clip. This is the gator clip that extends down from the ceiling and connects to that attic wire. You could clip this right on to the telescopic whip of your shortwave receiver and boost listening. I've done it with my Texan as I did with the other SWL setup and it works great. I get a nice boost in reception. Go I go from, say, 20 dBU to 40 or 50. Big boost there. 
Now let's follow the wire up to the ceiling. You can see it's more thoroughly insulated here. And then someone, the original owner, must have ripped off the insulation before putting it up or down, I want to say up, into the attic. So that's one connection off the DX wire, which I forgot to mention the attic is, is fully uninsulated. But the other connection is to coax, and that's what will be useful for shortwave listening that we'll see in the next part of the video. Or for shortwave listening on an SDR. All right, for the last part of the video, I will show you the setup on the computer and the connection from coax. That white cable that I showed you earlier comes all the way out to that coax jack that you can see by the speaker. I have another coax cord connected to the jack that extends around through here. Then there's a coax SMA adapter hanging right off that cabinet. And finally, the SMA cable down to my RTL SDR V3. This is what I'll be using to listen to shortwave and medium wave. Okay, so now let's take a look at the output on the computer. I was hoping to record this using something like oh, OBS Studio, but that didn't work out too well. So I'll go ahead and just look at the screen and record audio with um, this camera. I'm right now tuned into Radio Rebelde from Havana, Cuba at 5025. This is a software GQRX. You can see the waterfall for the different frequencies as well as the peaks. And I believe I have hardware on that gain control set. Speaking of that, let's go through the controls. You can see you can adjust the LNA gain, IQ balance, and, and, and so on. there. Various receiver options, you know, being able to type in the frequency, adjusting the width of the filter, filter shape, mode. You get everything from AM to narrow FM, wide FM, lower and upper sideband, and then uh, continuous wave. Speed of the AGC and so on, and then I haven't messed with the Fourier, Fourier transform settings. Okay, so let's go ahead and listen in. Oh, before I, forget, before I do that, I'll point out why this is so good to listen on the computer. I can flip back and forth from GQRX to the browser and see what's on air, as well as where there's gray line propagation or just better propagation due to nighttime conditions. And this is the case because during the night, there's less absorption in the there is an absorption in the D layer, so sky wave, short, uh, short wave transmissions can be propagated on the F layer of the ionosphere. What's really interesting is along the gray line at the edge between night and day, there is a disappearance of the D layer, but more ionization of the F layer due to the light nearby, and this can lead to really long distance propagation more than, you know, just hundreds of, of miles or thousands of miles within the uh, dark region. See, all the way, all the way down the gray line from, oh, I don't know, central, eastern, coastal South Africa up to Canada. Okay, so I, I just have some space stations in, that are broadcasting in the Spanish language. You could look up, you know, English, Portuguese, what have you. I'll go back to GQRX and let's see what we can hear. Oh. Some kind of jazz from Radio Rebelde.
Amato. Yeah, so you can two to those peaks. Another church station, probably. And that should be RHC. And that's just shortwave. You can also get a lot of medium wave with this setup. I, after adding in the counterpoise, had dramatic improvement in medium wave AM DX reception. Let's get an example. I'll tune into 1100 WTAM Cleveland. You see in the medium wave spectrum all these all these peaks coming in strong. Okay. Cam Rex St. Louis. CJBC Toronto. CHHA Toronto. Uh, let's see, 720 WTA. Yeah, and that's that's really really good. You can even get WGN weak by 700. I don't think it's quite as good reception as you would get with a standard AM FM radio, but pretty decent. And you know, you could record the audio on this, even set up a program automatically at a certain time to record the audio. It's a really nice way to to do shortwave listening. It works pretty well for me, and I've gone even Radio Romania International and broadcast from Europe in strong and clear just with that simple setup. I hope this is helpful to all of you. Maybe you'll put up your own attic antenna. Thank you all for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, provide what suggestions you have down below.